What is good everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a bunch of tips and tricks to improve your aim in Call of Duty Vanguard. So you can kill those people that are camping, you can kill those people running around DOS house with a shotgun because I've seen the clips and it's insane. Uh, that map is just so chaotic, but I want you to get as many kills as possible to improve your aim, to improve your teammates and your squad's aim. So make sure if this video helps you, you show it to them and send it to them. The first thing we're gonna be covering is sensitivity. I would recommend you finding a sensitivity that's comfortable for you. If you're frying, hitting every shot, don't change it. Use was comfortable for uh, pro play most players play on either 5-5, five, 6-6, five, six, six, or 7-7. Seven, seven. I prefer 6-6. Six, six. I've been playing on it the last like three years, so I think it's really good. Um, but this is all personal preference. Uh, I play with Dynamic. Dynamic is very good because it gives you pretty much extra aim assist. It makes it easier for you to aim on multiplayer. Uh, standard is really good too, so I'd recommend either using Standard or Dynamic, whatever feels better to you. But Dynamic has been my go-to for the past three Call of Duty games. For the left input dead zone and the right trigger dead zone, you want to put it at zero because the let that means you have to put less pressure on your triggers to actually shoot. So if you have it higher, you're gonna have to put more pressure on your triggers to shoot your gun. And then my left analog is for like strafing and stuff. I have that at zero. My right one is for like when I'm aiming, I have that at five because when controllers get older, they tend to get stick drift. And so you have to kind of like gradually bump this up. And then these two are 90. So I can just uh, not have to put as much force on my analogs, but they're still uh, moving instead of having it on 100. But let's get into a game and I'll show you guys all the tips and tricks of how to aim better. And now we're gonna talk about centering. I'm in a private match right now, custom lobby with bots on, with radar always on, so I know where they are. I can just run around, work on my shot, work on my movement. This is what all of the top content creators, the streamers, the YouTubers, and pro players do to get warmed up when they first hop on Call of Duty. It's a very big help, it's a very underrated tool, so make sure you're taking advantage of it. And um, the thing I wanted to talk about right now is centering. So I know someone's over here because uh, the radar's on, so I come around the corner ready for them like that. I'm already aiming in their general direction, so I don't have to just like run around and then like go around the corner and then look. I'm not running around like this and then turning. Okay, well I got shotgun, that's just not good. <laughs> but I'm running around and I see him right there, I'm ready for it. I'm running around, I'm getting ready for this guy centered over here. So I don't really have to move my aim when I get around the corner. I'm pretty much already aiming in that general direction and it's gonna make getting that kill so much easier. And that's one of the fundamentals in Call of Duty. If you can get your centering good to where you're running around this map, and let's say there's a window up here to the left, you are aiming at that window already because that's a very common spot for people to be in. That's pretty much what you want to do. It's pretty much being ready for the gunfights before they actually happen. And that takes time. It takes learning the map. It takes learning the game and then um, just some practice. So really practice on your centering so you're always ready for a gunfight. Either way you go. Here's something that every single player you watch on YouTube, on Twitch, live streaming, whatever it may be. This is what they do, every pro player, every match. So you need to be doing this. Every single Call of Duty player in the world needs to be doing this. With your on controller like this, and you're shooting, see how like the gun just kind of going crazy? But if you hold your right analog stick, don't hold it down, like don't press it. Do you hear that? Don't press it like that. Just slightly pull it down like this. Slightly pull it down like this. And look at how much more controlled the shots are. You don't wanna go all the way down so you're looking down, but just very slightly. Cause then when your gun is shooting, it's gonna help you control the recoil. Do that with every single weapon, with every single Call of Duty game, in every single gunfight. Just start practicing that. And it's gonna be weird for a little bit if you haven't done it already. I'm sure most of you are already subconsciously doing it without even knowing how much you're truly helping yourself. But trust me, once you get this down, it's gonna be so much easier to win gunfights. So don't hold it down like this. You don't want to hear that. You just want to slightly pull it down, very slightly. And the shots are so much more accurate. Make sure you are doing that. And we're going to go through all the aim response curves right now. First, I have standard on. This is the most simple one. It has the slowest uh, movement time. So if you are a player who likes to play pretty methodical, get good positioning and kind of just take your time with everything, you're not running around doing 360, spinning around, going crazy. I would probably recommend this for the very casual player, you know, who just likes to chill. I do think it's a good starting point and then you can work your way up. The more comfortable you get with the maps, the better you get with your guns and your shot and stuff like that. So with standard, what's gonna happen is there's just gonna be like slow the whole time. It's gonna be slow from when you first start it and then it has a pretty good lock on too. So you can see when I get close to Izzy's body, I hit that like that, like force field where I'm getting that aim assist. 
You see like right here, I was just going very slow. Then you see it cross. Then you see it start moving faster like this. So the aim assist is pretty strong on standard. So this is a very good starting point for a newcomer or a beginner in Call of Duty. And now with a linear aim response curve, this one is kind of crazy how it works. It doesn't have really any, it has very little slowdown and very, it doesn't really have any speed up at all. So this is the one you're most in control of, but I wouldn't say this is the best one to use because when you're not in control of it, you might not be able to get your aim right onto that player. You might not slow down at all. And then sometimes when you need to speed up, you can go really fast, but you might go too fast sometimes. It can end up hurting you. And you can even see when aiming at Izzy, how small the aim assist is when you um, uh, get close to him, look at. So I'm going like this, just normal, 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 normal. And then right there, it's like right here is where it starts hitting. When I was on standard, it was down like this point out here, the aim assist was that strong too. So there's really no slowdown or speed up with this thing. So if you wanna just go crazy, you can use this, but I don't know if you should really be using this. I, don't, I personally would not recommend it. So let's see. Right here is when we get to it. Then right here is where we get out of it. So linear, like I said, is a pretty risky uh, aim response curve to use. And now on to dynamic. Dynamic, I would say, is the best aim response curve for anyone that's above like a casual to like average player's level. Once you start getting better and better, I'd recommend using dynamic. And that's because it is really good to run around. So let's say you're running around crazy and someone's over here, you just need to snap at them like that. You just need to turn quick. You can only do that on dynamic. And when you do it, it's gonna give you a fast movement right when you start turning. But when you get close to aiming at that person, that's when it's gonna slow down. So it's a really big advantage because you're moving fast when you need to, but it's slowing down when you need to hit those shots. So it's like a give and take, but it's honestly the perfect aim assist for the slightly more advanced players in my opinion. So like I said, I would start off with standard if I was a casual just getting into it, but then trying to work my way over to dynamic because I think especially in this game with how fast it is played, it's almost a necessity to use this because you're running around so much, running off a of spawn, running to the hard point, running to plant the bomb in SND or running to go camp that corner in TDM. But it just helps being able, because if you're getting shot in the back, you would easily turn and just snap on the person like that. That's why everyone pretty much uses the dynamic aim response curve. And that's why personally, I think it is the best one to use, especially in a fast paced action game like Call of Duty Vanguard. Learning recoil patterns is very important because let's say you're an SMG player and you really wanna get good with the MP40. So you start using it a lot. Different attachments on this gun is gonna completely change the recoil pattern. So first off, you wanna have attachments that you think are the best. These are the current ones I'm uh, experimenting with at the moment. And um, you just wanna kinda wanna practice with those and get repetitions by shooting bots to warm up. Shoot like 50 bots to warm your movement and shot up in a private match lobby and then go on to public match servers and start playing in there and just kind of get used to the recoil of your gun this is how my gun shoots so it's kind of like a bouncy recoil like it's kind of you see how it's kind of going like back and forth and back and forth and back and forth i just kind of have to get used to that and try to control that but every gun is going to be different to ar to the LMG, to the shotgun, cause it's just like, do. So you're like, gonna, it's gonna have a lot of horizontal. Cause when you're shotgunning, it's gonna be like, do, do, do. Oh wait, that's that's vertical. Oh my God, I'm faded. Vertical, do, do, do. That's what it's gonna be. So you really just wanna practice with all those weapons. And then you wanna do a deep dive with the attachments on the certain guns. Because with the attachments, there's gonna be some who give you aim down sight speed. But this particular one, the con, is I lose recoil control. So this recoil control attachment, it makes me a little bit faster, but it's gonna make my aim a little crazier. So I need to use other attachments to try and ba balance that out. Like the, uh, let's find out, let's find out. The stipple grip, initial accuracy and recoil control. So right when I start shooting, I get that initial control of the recoil back. Recoil control for the weighted. As you see the cons, I'm a little bit slower. My aim down side speed slower, my movement slower altogether, but I get recoil control. And you really wanna base it on the gun you're using. If you're using an AR, you don't need to be flying around the map like a maniac. It's a better to be at like the medium range and long range gunfights, because that's usually where you're gonna be. And then you're able to control your shots and you just wanna find a really good balance of movement speed and then also of recoil but if let's say you want to camp you don't care about moving at all you can just completely stack you can completely stack recoil control flinch resistance and all that stuff so let's say i didn't want to move 
I'd probably use, hmm, let's see. This would be really good if you like to post up and not move. The only thing you're gonna have to be crouch or prone, that you're gonna have to be perfectly still. But you can use something like this, the Carver foregrip, because it gives you two times recoil control, so that's extra recoil control, plus hip fire accuracy for the up close gunfights, which can really help you get that first bullet into the enemy and win the gunfight, but it takes down your ADS time. So if I was just posting up, I'd probably be using the Carver grip, but since we are kind of running around and going crazy, that's why I like to have the M3 ready grip on. But you can watch all my class setup videos, you can watch other people's class setup videos, and most of the time they will be really good, but I'm always trying to do the deep dive and give you guys all the best info. Hopefully this video helps. Thank you guys all for watching. I will see you in the next video and have a great day everyone. As always, my name is Attach, and I'm out. Peace.